Good morning, everyone, and welcome to your daily dose of spiritual vitamin with me, Bonnie B. This morning, I am out here talking to y'all. I mean, it's the wee hours of the morning. But the Spirit of God wants me to talk to y'all about the moon. So, I'm going to discuss the moon a little bit. Put these away from the reading earlier. And so for our daily dose, we'll talk a little bit about the moon. The main reason I'm going to talk about the moon today is because of lunar eclipse. And I'm going to explain a few things about you about, a few things about, in general, just some general knowledge for you. The lunar eclipse is a time for setting your intentions into the atmosphere, to the universe, to God. It's a time of reset. That's the purpose of this moon. And we got another one coming December 14th. It's to reset. It's a time for you to go in, examine your life, and reset it. Reset it. Just like daylight savings time, we do it every season. We reset time. We, re, we, we rearrange. We make our hours longer for daylight and shorter for night. In the summertime, and in the wintertime, we make our hours longer for night and shorter for daylight because it's hibernation time. So, since we are all polar bears in some sense of the word, because we all hibernate, it's a reset. We all need to reset our clocks. We need to reset the universal clock. We need to put new intentions in the air. We need to set new goals for ourselves. And we need to release those things that no longer serve us. When we see the eclipse, sometimes the sun will come through the moon or through the earth as the rays travel through. We see a red eclipse. That's only because those are the diffusive colors that have come through. The moon is not bleeding. Those are diffusive colors that have come through the spectrum of color. When you reset your clock, you recess, you're releasing your bad habits or negative energy and situations in your life purpose. That's your restart time. That's so that you can start a new cycle. Shit can start changing. And you start losing some of this negative karmic energy. Because in our body we should learn a few things. One is that you are 72% water. And your body has a relationship with water. And your relationship with water is either going to be a good relationship with water. Or a bad relationship with water. And I'm hoping that you have good relationships with water. Because if you have bad relationships with water, you're going to have health problems. When you think negative, you create health problems. When you have a poor relationship with water, you also get health problems. Because water is the one key element in our life that is negative, that is 100% necessary, necessary, excuse me, for, for life. You need water. You are 70% water. Which means that you should consume water. They've got certain cultures that have a copper pot. And they put tamarind and turmeric in it. And a flower. For the Divi angel. That's the Hindus. And they drink from that pot. And that water is what they call living water. And that water helps them not to get now there are circumstances out here that you cannot control and some of us are just prone to illness but water is a key element that can help you avoid a lot of illness just like putting oil in the engine of a car 
putting water into your engine. Even if you have to put a little bit of turmeric in it and just let it sit and drink it later. That water will do your body an mm, immense amount of good because we are 70% water. Everything, water is everywhere. You cannot avoid water. Water is either going to be your friend or it's not. If the moon, when it comes out, some people tend to go batshit crazy because it was already crazy. The moon just heightened, enhanced their behavior. The moon did not create the behavior. The moon did not call that behavior forth. The moon can only enhance what you innately already are. a lot I got to teach y'all. Okay, back to the moon. Sorry for leaving. Um, it's said that we have to break the bond with the planet. It's said and believed that some believe that the lunar cycles occur, especially eclipses. They were signs of God's anger. <coughs> That's so untrue. The lunar cycle is not a sign of God's anger. It was red only because red rays of light came through it. Okay? That's why. It wasn't because God was mad. Because if he mad with you, he gonna come get you out another way other than shining some red light. Okay? Um... In order to break the bond with the planet, we have to, we go through what's known as feminine cycles and birth. In order to break the bond with the planet, you have to go beyond the cycles of birth and death. The salt of the earth is you. You are the salt of the earth. The moon enhances who you are. As the ocean rises, you too should rise. Because it, it rises as an effect of the moon. Through willingness... You can uplift your consciousness. This in some ways talks about the doorway to becoming a bigger person than you are now. Willingness. Willingness is a volunteer behavior. cost you nothing and you get nothing except that personal joy visions mean I have a larger desire that is all inclusive that's your vision a personal desire that is all inclusive Because desire fundamentally is personal. I desire cake. I desire this person. I desire that. Those are all selfish requests. They're desires. Me. I. But a visionary. A visionary is one who sees the all-inclusive. I tell you these things because manifestation. Who are you envisioning? Is it a, something that's a visionary desire? A selfish desire? Desire 
is an incremental way of arranging and rearranging our lives. Incremental way. It's measurable. And some people are either miserable or they're joyful. Matter of perceptions. States of being. To volunteer, you have no will of their own. They have no will of their own. The volunteer is one who accepts whatever you give them. They're voluntary. Doesn't cost you anything. Doesn't cost them anything. But what happens around you, God is to judge. Simply because there are no good decisions and no bad decisions. There are no good people, no bad people. It's a matter of perception. It's a matter of perception. If you've been going left for 987 years, everybody in my generational family, we've always turned left. We all turn left. We all turn left. No matter where we're going, we all make that left. That's our family nature. Left side. Everything on the left. It's a learned behavior. Whereas another family may just choose to strictly on the right. That doesn't mean everybody on the left is bad. And that doesn't mean everybody on the right is bad. It means that the behaviors of the individuals in the middle. Who are either all totally left. Or totally right. Or have learned behaviors. These are things that have been taught. These are things that have been initiated into them. These are things that have been indoctrinated into them. Our family turns left. We always turn left. We always do left, 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 left. You never experience the right. Because you've always turned left. And the same thing with the people on the right. If you think that's right for you, then you see no wrong in it. But until you can consciously step back and look at the fact that there's more to life than left and there's more to life than right. can expand into the left over right because you have tunnel vision can't see can't grow can't expand I'm saying these things because I need us to be more conscious in our manifestations We must be more cognitive, more aware, more awake and present in the actual moment. All of our manifestations can't be selfish. They can't just be about our personal desires. As a collective. We have to look at everybody. We have to become visionaries. And look at the overall picture. Not just our little corner of the world. But how do we make a difference? How do we make it better? In ourselves, we all have longings to expand. 
and so often we've gotten two terminologies screwed. One is spirituality. Spirituality. When you understand that spirituality deals with the non physical constraints of human components. Spirituality has been misused in so many ways. We get them really mixed up with religion. We get them mixed up with people's doctrines. The fact of the matter is spirituality deals with spirit. And spirit is the one thing that cannot be contained in any container. Spirit is that non-physical part of you. Non-physical. Spirit is that part of you that goes beyond the human comprehension of physical containment and understanding. Spirituality is the essence of what floats out beyond you, beyond this. Spirituality deals with the creative energies of this thing in here. Our experiences in life has to go beyond our physical nature. The word spirituality has been distorted in so many ways. Essentially it means the experiences of your life that has transcended the limitations of your physicality. Spirituality is not a physical situation. You can't sit in church and talk about, I'm in my spirituality. Spirituality is a mindset. It's a, it's a spiritual thing. It goes beyond this. It's the ethers. Spirituality deals with that consciousness that's separate from your body. Spirituality does not mean going to the temple, the mosque, the church. It's about turning inward and knowing that which we are. The essence. It's not about that thing that you take to a building. It's not about that part of you that sits in the pool, the pew pit, on Sunday. It's that essence within the physical constraints of your body. It's your spirituality. It's your relationship beyond the scope of all of this. It's the matter of knowing that this is awakened and that this is consciously making choices. Not just walking through the matrix and doing what you've been doing. When you begin to understand that there's a difference <coughs> in you as an individual. See, as people, we gather things. Can't take them with you. The things, you gather them. They belong to you because you've gathered them you've collected them you've earned them you've acquired them they are your possessions they are not you they are things that you hold in your hand you cannot hold spirituality in your hand for spirituality is spirit consciousness intelligent Awakened, intelligent consciousness. 
that thing that supersedes understanding. But it's the essence of the knowing that you come from some place other than yourself. It's the need to reverence something greater than yourself. That which we gather can only belong to us. It's not us. And this is a fundamental mistake of mankind. What we have gathered, we think of as me. All the stuff that we've gathered, this is me. My job, my car, my this, my that. This is me. No, it's not. Those are things you have acquired. They belong to the me. They are not the me. The me is the essence inside that human being. The me is the imagination within you that sees things. That God portion of you in the pineal gland that helps you to create. That's the me. Not the things that you have gathered. They are your belongings. Your possessions. They are not you. For you supersede things. Things will be here. Things will rot and go away. Things will always exist. But you are the valuable commodity in that whole equation. You. Not the things that you've gathered. Not the things that you possess. But the spirit animal. You. There are suffering people in life because they have not learned how to discipline themselves in the three major components of our existence. Three major components. You must discipline yourself with your memories your experiences and those things of your imagination. When you find yourself going through things that have happened to you 10 or 20 years ago, you are suffering from your memory. Your memory is causing you to suffer. When you project into the future and you think about all the shit that can go wrong, it is your imagination that has caused you to suffer. These things must be disciplined. Because the only thing that you can truly count on are your experiences. And those are the things that stick with you. Life after life. Experience after experience. That is the intellect that is taken into the consciousness. Those experiences. That's how come when you begin to wake up your Akashi records, you can remember shit. Because those are the only things that travel forward with you are your experiences in life. They are coded into your DNA of your mind. But the one thing I want you to leave on this last note, I'm going to leave you with one major thing that you need in order to manifest. The one 
major criteria that is necessary for manifestation. All four dimensions of the being must be in perfect alignment. All four dimensions of the being must be in perfect alignment. On that note, I'm going to leave you with your mind, your body, your emotions, and your energies. These are the four dimensions for manifestation. Okay. On that note, I bid you adieu. Till it's time for a little enlightening knowledge with Bonnie B for your next daily dose of your spiritual vitamin. Be blessed, beloved.